सो आज का जो टॉपिक है इंडियन पॉलिटी के अंदर मीन्स के एंगल से दैट इज इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सो इन दिस इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन यू नो वी नीड टू फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड सम ऑफ द बेसिक आइडियाज दैट आर एसोसिएटेड विद द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन वाई डू यू नीड अ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इन द फर्स्ट प्लेस देन वॉट आर द बेसिक वैल्यूज दैट आर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन हैज एंड कन्वेज वॉट इज द रेलिवेंस ऑफ दोज वैल्यूज टूडे how it fits into the scheme of global constitutionalism and what is the you know basic characteristics if any like for example rigidity versus flexibility for example uh, whether it is a bag of borrowed or does it represent a cosmopolitan culture so is tarah ke kuch uh, debates hain jo constitution aur iske sath jude hue hain theek hai unko ek ek karke samajhte hain so try and uh, give the uh, attention and try to make notes also while i am writing this for you okay so let's see constitution so first and foremost humne state ke bare mein padha tha ki jo origin of state hai iske liye ek social contract theory aati right now under this social contract theory we the people essentially agreed that the legitimate power will be there with the state okay so this basically legitimizes the power of the state and this legitimized power of the state will be utilized for the welfare of the people yeah that's what we desire welfare of the people now essentially through the social contract that's the expectation over a period of time the social contract has evolved this has become something of a political contract okay and this political contract is something that we are visualizing in the form of constitution this political contract is whereby you know everything is to be defined within the state yeah so we can say it is a defined state when you define it it is defined in two manners बेसिक इंटेंट ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन क्या है तो लिख लीजिए साथ साथ में इंटेंट ऑफ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सो दैट इज ट्राइंग टू क्रिएट ए लिमिटेड एंड पॉजिटिव स्टेट लिमिटेड एंड पॉजिटिव स्टेट लिमिटेड कहने का क्या मतलब फ्रेंच रेवल्यूशन के टाइम पे देर हैज बिन अस्ट चार्ल्स डे मॉन्टेस्क्यू याद है so this fellow gave one important consideration you know p t m charles de montesquieu so he said that there should be separation of power because we know that if too much power is concentrated in one authority then it is bound to be corrupted over a period of time there can be a misuse also so this is the doctrine of separation of power that's what got manifested separation of power that means the state's legislative executive and judicial power should be separated now why this kind of a theory or this kind of a doctrine came into a being the reason was during the social contract which we created the general rule has been either through monarchies or maybe just tribal chiefs at a smaller level these monarchies you will govern the system in such a way that their luxury should not be compromised this was visualized in the in britain and more so in france that's why the french revolution happened there yeah so these monarchies you know mostly the king is the epitome of all power and at times it has been seen that since all the power was concentrated in the king it may go against the needs of people now over a period of time certain values started gaining importance while these monarchies were in play these values were first some human rights because as we have known in world history that they, these monarchies generally prospered under one kind of a system that is called feudalism now under feudalism the nobility and the aristocracy the elites they prospered while the labor the peasantry they perished yeah so this feudal order essentially was fatal to the human rights 
fatal to liberty, equality, justice, and all those norms. So along with human rights came this slogan, liberty, equality, and fraternity. Along with that came social justice. So these kind of aspects started gaining importance or people started feeling that we are not being treated as equals. Since they came along, therefore, in the French Revolution, all this basic aspects happened. Prior to this also, we have seen in world history that there is a period that's called Renaissance and Enlightenment. Yeah, These two have happened before the French Revolution, the Renaissance and the Enlightenment. Okay. Now, during this, the political thought, the social thought, the economic thought, everything sort of took a change. And all these values started finding some kind of expression in literary works of Rousseau, literary works of, uh, uh, you know, Jeremy Bentham and so many other people. So now these literary works found their expression in the French Revolution. Now, up till here, we know there is a doctrine of separation of power. So this doctrine of separation of power is also applied in two ways, generally. Worldwide, if we look at it. Either it is very rigid separation or it is to an extent uh, overlapping. Okay. It's called functional overlapping. Th this is the Indian version. The third way is the British version where we don't, we will see it flexible. The rigid way is where there is a strict compartmentalization of legislature, executive, and judicial powers. This compartmentalization is seen in USA. Bilkul alag alag hain, apne spheres of work bhi sabke alag alag hain. Thik hai? Flexibility hume Britain mein dekhne ko milti hai. Wahaan pe bohat zada strict compartmentalization nahi hai. Parliamentary supremacy ke tehet sab kuch kaam kar raha hai. Thik hai? So there is not much compartmentalization there. It's very strictly said parliamentary supremacy. Even Britain does not have any written constitution. It is an unwritten constitution, something that is created by the various laws which are given by the parliament from time to time. So therefore, this is the flexible aspect of Britain when it comes to doctrine of separation of power. In India, we do have various institutions, legislature, executive, judiciary, but there is a lot of functional overlap. This functional overlap is supposed to create some notion of accountability. That one institution can hold the other accountable or what you can simply state as a system of checks and balances. So power sabke paas hai, apne apne independent arena mein, India mein kaam karte hai, lekin at the same time, there is this system of checks and balances where the legislature can check the executive, the executive can check the legislature and vice versa. The judiciary can check them both. And while the legislature can also in some ways impact the judiciary. So these kind of checks and balances system are there in India. Okay. So for example, if I give you a few. So in India, the parliament will determine the number of judges in the Supreme Court. So, uske liye, jo bill hai, wo yahan pe pass hona hai in the Supreme Court or in the High Courts or something like that. Then, similarly, the appointment had a lot of role of Parliament up till the time. Then, after that, Supreme Court created a collegium system. We will discuss that later. So, that is also regulated by Parliament. The salary and the other allowances of judiciary are also decided by the parliament okay then the impeachment or removal of supreme court judges is also something to be decided by the parliament okay so that's where the essentially the legislature or the legislative wing is affecting the judiciary so there is certain kind of a functional overlap on the other hand judiciary kya kar sakta hai Let's see. So judiciary can check any law made by parliament, whether it is as per the constitution or not. 
if it finds any law to be ultra wires, that means not as per the constitutional norms, then it can simply declare it null and void. Okay. Then judiciary in terms of executive, ye to legislature ke terms mein aage. in terms of executive, it has the power of mandamus, for example, through which the judiciary can order mandamus ka matlab hai, we command. It is one of the rich jurisdiction of Supreme Court. So, in this case, the executive authority can order de sakta hai, command de sakta hai, apna kaam karne ke liye. Hai? Then, the judiciary through the various systems of public interest litigation can always check both the legislature and the executive in their functioning. Yeah? It can either direct and whatever judicial decisions are, they have the effect of almost a law throughout the country. For example, if uh, judiciary says that this should not be there, then that's that. It's done. If Supreme Court gives a particular verdict, it has as good as effect as any law made by the parliament. So there again, the judiciary has some kind of functional overlap. Now, the legislature and executive also have a functional overlap. The legislature essentially is represented by a majoritarian person. So we have something called Council of Ministers within the legislature which is headed by the prime minister. Yeah, and these council of ministers are essentially the part of legislature only, but these are the fellows who are taking care of the political arm of the executive. Executive ko bhi do mein divide kar sakte hain. Executive koon hota hai jo kaam karega, actual mein. Legislature, law banayega. Judiciary usko interpret karega. Okay, so there is a political executive and there is an administrative executive jis mein aap log jana chata hai. Civil services. A political executive jo hai, wo to parliament mein bait hai, to legislature ka ek major part hai. One. Thik hai? Jo administrative executive hai, wo essentially is political executive se hi command le raha hai. Kaam karne ke liye. To, jab bhi parliament mein alag alag bills ya motions ke through, parliament can always scrutinize the working of the executive. For example, we got no confidence motion. So that the parliament, if it passes against the council of ministers or the government in charge, then the council of ministers has to entirely resign and the government falls. That is one kind of a motion. If there is budget, for example. So within budget, you have various kinds of economic motions like token cut, policy cut, economy cut. So there is executive budget and parliament can motions ke through us budget mein bhi shirkhani kar sakta. So, this is the legislature or executive ke bhi overlapping areas. This is the functional overlap created in India. This is a successful combination raha in terms of providing the measure of accountability, in terms of performance of the state, and always having a checks and balances system in the governance of the state. So, that's what we were able to achieve in our way of creating Indian constitution. Okay, now is functional overlapping tak ya is structure tak jo aaj humne create kiya constitution mein pahunchne ke liye India mein ek bahut lambi chodi history rahi hai. Aam taur pe jab aap polity padhte hain, to wo history hum regulating act 1773 se shuru karte hain, lekin wo ek limited perspective hai. Actual mein humari jab judiciary mein aapne suna hooga supreme court koi decision le raha hai, so, कई बार हमारे जो सोशल लॉज बड़े पुराने चले आ रहे हैं इवन द मनु स्मृति एंड द धर्म शास्त्रस दे आर आल्सो टू बी रेफर्ड फ्रॉम टाइम टू टाइम टू गिव ज्यूडिशियल डिसीजंस यस सिमिलरली इफ यू लुक एट द वे द सिविल कोड इज दैट मींस द मैरिज द अडॉप्शन द सस्टेनेंस द लिनिएज एवरीथिंग देन दैट इज आल्सो टू एन एक्सटेंट इंपैक्टेड और एटलीस्ट अफेक्टेड बाय whatever has been going in the long term history of india the creation of reservation or positive discrimination itself within the constitution is to be seen in the reference of that sc and st communities have been for long being battered as uh, you know the less privileged section in the society so that's what has resulted in the various formations or the various aspects of our constitution today yes so the evolutionary part if you look at it in terms of Indian constitution as certain areas that we need to be taking into consideration. 
let's see what are these areas so if you look at ancient history for once now in ancient history you will come across something like uh, you know there is vedic period so it has always been inspirational in giving us certain sense of what is the or what are the core moral values that we need to be taking into consideration yes so even today the vedic literature provides us with the same then during the later vedic period what happened so various kind of prejudices started in india so the prejudice against women women disempowerment so this was one of the issues that started here then the second thing that started here is the varna system or the classification in the chatur varna that is brahman kshatriya vaishya shudra yeah so caste system has its roots in the later vedic period so the entire aspect of brahman kshatriya vaishya and shudras that aise likho to bakwas lagta hai to wo sab yahan pe shuru hua okay so within this shudra yahan pe ek particular theory hai purusha sukta theory purusha sukta theory in the vedic literature it says that you know brahmins they originated from the head of brahma kshatriyas they originated from the arms of brahma so their role is to protect vaishya they originated from the thighs of brahma so their role is to give balance to the society okay shudra originated from the feet of brahma so their role is to do the menial task is tarah se interpret kiya gaya halaki what purusha sukta theory is all about is functional classification actually that within a society what people are to do what kind of work okay so it was not a sort of hierarchy it was only a functional classification koi bhi kaam chota bada nahi hai sab zaruri hai aapko bhi sare kaam karne padte hain apne ghar ke andar kabhi na kabhi theek hai to is wajah se ye फंक्शनल क्लासिफिकेशन ना रह के ब्राह्मण्स या ये कह लीजिए कि उस टाइम के जो सोशल स्ट्रक्चर था उसने इसको हिरार्किकल क्लासिफिकेशन देनी शुरू की सो व्हेन दिस हिरार्की ऑफ कास्ट वाज क्रिएटेड एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम द शुद्रास एसेंशियली द वन दैट वी टुडे क्वालिफाई एज एस सी एंड एस कम्युनिटी दे वर द मोस्ट डिस्प्रिवलेज एंड दिस समथिंग लाइक द नोशन ऑफ अनटचेबिलिटी स्टार्टेड Okay. Now, these notions are not defined in the constitution. What is untouchability? What is caste system? What is minority? Never defined. They are to be understood as a social practice that has evolved over a period of time in India. Okay. So, our Supreme Court also makes this decision in this way. They don't say that this is minority or this is untouchability. They never define it. it has to be understood the social as a social practice as it evolved over a period of time in india okay so these are something that are coming off in later vedic period and they continued in the medieval period also the one element that got added here during the medieval period in indian history is the coming up of the islamic uh, you know government or the islamic kingdom so essentially the delhi sultanate and the mughal period we can divide it into two now both of these delhi sultanate and mughal periods have their own phases of bigotry like for example if we have to consider the mughal period so aurangzeb was the biggest one or the biggest personification of a bigot in india because he did not tolerate anybody else having anybody else other religion any other religion he would want everybody to be following his religion so that was his that's it similarly we had certain people in delhi sultanate period also now this islamic sultans they started you know taxing people who are from other religion essentially what started during this is sort of a communal issue this is the strain that start building in india the communal issues during the medieval period up till the 
ancient Indian history, communalism is not much of an issue. But during this period, definitely it does. For example, you will definitely find the communal atrocities committed against the Sikhs during the Islamic rule. Yeah, like during the reign of Aurangzeb, uh, you know, and uh, later thereafter also, all the gurus and uh, Sikh gurus and uh, you know the uh, later Banda Bahadur and later Sikhs, all of them were prejudiced against, and they continuously worked in that direction. So these communal issues sort of started during this period. They were so apparent that they started putting, you know, even taxes on people following other religions. For example, we had something called as jizya. So this was a tax on non-Islamic or non-Muslim population at that point of time. But at the same time, although this communal strains did start, there were certain other movements which started during this medieval period, which were sort of relaxing like they did put this communal issues to a rest and they helped in the easy transition of people towards the islamic religion or towards mysticism so these were for example the sufi order so this was also there so they were not as harsh and they welcomed almost everybody so if you are following a sufi order it's not that you have to be a namazi it was not required for you to be Anybody and everybody can go. Even today, there are Sufi silsilas. So there is, for example, the Chishti, Sauravadi, and various kinds of silsilas in India. The Chishti silsila is associated with Ajmer, Khwaja Mahinuddin Chishti. So he has been uh, known for welcoming people from all religion, whether it is Hindu, whether it is Muslim, whether it is Sikh. And today, even almost all religion people go there. It's like this, Sufi order. Similarly, there is the Bhakti movement. So these fellows essentially started what you can say is mysticism, Rahaswad, okay? And it is open to all religions, okay? So that's why there is a little bit of uh, tension due to communal issues, which is being taught by the government. And there is a little bit of relaxation provided by these two orders, okay? Both are going hand in hand. That's why Ek Taraf say Ketan carrot and stick. So dono chal rahe. So social order uh, may communal aspect hai, lekin communal violence tak bahut zyada nahi pahunch raha. Abhi. Wo communal violence tak pahunche ga British ke aane ke baad. Wo usko ek violent rang denge. Thik hai. So what happens with the coming of British? Essentially the Europeans. So we say this is the modern history of India. So essentially, they came as traders in the beginning, and they started just uh, you know setting up their trading units or factories in India. So when they established their factories, essentially they were for trade purposes. Yahan se saman khareed ke leke gaye, gold or silver deke gaye. Raja log ko bhi khush kar dete the from time to time by giving them certain gifts, whatever they were being able to create out of their industrial revolution. And the rajas here had been seen for that, uh, seen those things for the first time. So bade khush ho jaate. So, now this was starting phase. Tha. Sabse pehle Portuguese aaye, phir Dutch aaye, phir English aaye, phir French aaye. So that's the order in which they came. Yeah. Now, what happened during this period is, over a period of time, that is from 1757 to 1857, we call this period as the period of British paramount sea. So this is the time when the British are evolving as one great power within India. Okay, so they are trying to create a pan-India empire now. Alongside this capturing of Indian territory, what else is going on is there is certain there are certain constitutional developments also which are going on. So these are the what you can say starting from regulating Act 1773, why these constitutional developments came upon is, when the English first arrived in India, they arrived in the form of East India Company. It was like a public sector undertaking of the British Empire back in that time. And there was like a memorandum of understanding between the British Empire and the East India Company, which was time pe wo kya bolte the? Royal Charter. 
रॉयल चार्टर के अंदर होता क्या है कि आपको स्टेट गवर्नमेंट या स्टेट की तरफ से पैसा मिल रहा है आप स्टेट के बिहाफ पे जाके कोई टेरिटरी कैप्चर कर सकते हैं वॉर वेज कर सकते हैं टैक्सेस कलेक्ट कर सकते हैं केसेस लड़ सकते हैं ठीक है तो ये रॉयल चार्टर के एस्पेक्ट्स थे तो जब सबसे पहले ये लोग इंडिया में आए तो एज ट्रेडर्स आए धीरे धीरे जैसे इन्होंने देखा कि यहाँ पे तो छोटे छोटे राजा हैं आपस में लड़ी जा रहे हैं तो उसका फायदा उठाते हुए इन्होंने अपने लिए प्रिवलेजेस बढ़ाने की कोशिश की ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम एंड देन जब उनको लगा कि भाई मिलिट्री माइट इनकी कुछ खास है नहीं और हमारे पास ज्यादा अच्छी टेक्नोलॉजी है तो धीरे धीरे राइट फ्रॉम दी बंगाल बैटल्स दैट इज बैटल ऑफ क्लासी एंड बक्सर सेवनटीन एंड सेवनटीन टिल ऑनवर्ड्स इन्होंने धीरे धीरे एरिया टेरिटरी पोलिटिकल पावर कैप्चर करना शुरू किया so this is the thing that is going on in this period but this east india company did not remain the same over a period of time east india company ka wujud tab tak raha jab tak ye ek sirf commercial entity thi jab tak ye trading entity thi isme east india company ke andar jo officers ja rahe the like robert clive and people warren hastings jo shuruaati daur ke governors hain ab ye log bahut zyada paisa kama ke britain wapas gaye लेकिन ईस्ट इंडिया कंपनी एज अ कंपनी बहुत ज्यादा फाइनेंशियली स्ट्रॉन्ग नहीं थी ऑफिसर्स बहुत स्ट्रॉन्ग थे तो इसने एक अपने आप में क्यूरियोसिटी uh, पैदा की विद इन द ब्रिटिश पार्लियामेंटेरियंस बैक इन ब्रिटेन कि ये इतने अमीर होके कहाँ से आ रहे हैं इंडिया में इतना क्या कौन सा पैसा पड़ा हुआ है सो एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम दिस वॉन्टेड टू समवेयर इंटरवीन इन द वर्किंग ऑफ दिस ईस्ट इंडिया कंपनी एंड देन द चांस केम वेन द ईस्ट इंडिया कंपनी asked for a loan from the british parliament that's where they got their chance why it asked for a loan because jab bhi ye ladne jate the let's say kisi raja ke against agar to jeet jate to raja ko bolte ki war indemnity bharo aur aapki war ki wajah se hamara itna nuksan ho gaya itne paise do aur agar haar jate to inko dena padta तो जब जब ये वॉर हार रहे थे दे हैड टू गिव मनी फॉर एग्जांपल वॉर अगेंस्ट टीपू सुल्तान और वॉर अगेंस्ट द फ्रेंच उस टाइम पे कभी कभी अगर कहीं पे हार जाते तो इनको देना पड़ता तो उस चक्कर में ईस्ट इंडिया कंपनी जो है ये ब्रिटिश पार्लियामेंट से लोन देने गया इस लोन के टाइम पे उन्होंने जो फर्स्ट इंटरवेंशन था वो किया दैट इज द रेगुलेटिंग एक्ट ऑफ सेवनटीन This was the first intervention by the British Parliament in the working of the East India Company. Through this, what they did is essentially they created an authoritative structure on top of the entire East India Company. That authority came to be known as the Governor of Bengal. Because in the start, they had only Bengal territory. Okay, so Governor General of Bengal, the name of the first person we have is Warren Hastings. कि वही इंडिया में इस टाइम पे तैनात भी थे वॉर्न हेस्टिंग्स ठीक सो 1773 ही इज द फर्स्ट गवर्नर जनरल ऑफ इंडिया देन दे क्रिएटेड समथिंग कॉल्ड एज अ बोर्ड ऑफ कंट्रोल सो व्हिच विल बी रिस्पांसिबल फॉर ऑल द कमर्शियल एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ द कंपनी इट दे क्रिएटेड समथिंग कॉल्ड एज अ सुप्रीम कोर्ट एट कलकत्ता बिकॉज़ बंगाल इज अंडर देन सो द फर्स्ट जज ऑफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट वाज एलिजा एनपे Okay. Now, this is a quote where Indian laws as well as the European laws will be taken into consideration while taking up the cases. Okay. So all this started within Regulating Act 1773. The second act. Now, in this Governor General of Bengal, you know, he was assisted by a Council of Four for decision making. The Regulating Act. अब इस काउंसिल ऑफ फोर में होता क्या था मेजॉरिटी बेस्ड डिसीजन मेकिंग होती थी तो वार्न हेस्टिंग लेट्स से गवर्नर जनरल बंगाल के हैं इनके नीचे चार लोग आए फ्रांसिस क्लेवरिंग बैरवल एंड मेसन ये चार लोग आए रट्टा मारने की जरूरत नहीं है समझा रहा हूं अब इनमें से दो लोग वार्न हेस्टिंग से साथ होते थे और दो उसके अगेंस्ट होते थे जब भी कोई डिसीजन लेना है वार्न हेस्टिंग मिलिट्री जनरल थे बड़े परेशान हुए उन्होंने वन फाइन डे एक को शूट कर दिया जो अगेंस्ट होते थे तो दूसरा भी लाइन में आ गया अभी ये किया गया था कि कंसंट्रेशन ऑफ पावर ना हो वार्न हेस्टिंग्स के हाथ में इसलिए किया गया था लेकिन ये मैकेनिज्म फेल हो गया तो इस वजह से उनको इसके अंदर थोड़ा चेंज करना पड़ा 
सो ब्रिटिश प्राइम मिनिस्टर थे विलियम पिट सेवनटीन के अंदर तो उनके नाम पे एक और एक्ट आया पिट्स इंडिया एक्ट 1784. इसके बाद अलग अलग वेरियस लेजिस्लेशन इनकी आती रही राइट अप टू वट यू कैन कॉल एज गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एक्ट 1935. यू स्टडी देम इन डिटेल यू ऑलरेडी स्टडी देम इन डिटेल मोस्ट ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स गिवन देयर प्रॉब्लम्स बट एनी हाउ दो आर टू येट स्टडी सो दे विल स्टडी इन टाइम अब ये गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एक्ट नाइनटीन आज हमारे कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन का एक मेजोरिटी एस्पेक्ट मेजोरिटी एस्पेक्ट अगर बोलूं तो आज करीब 66 परसेंट ऑफ आर इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इज व्हाट वाज देयर इन गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एक्ट 1935 क्रिएटेड बाय द ब्रिटिशर्स सो दिस इज द लॉन्ग एवोल्यूशनरी हिस्ट्री ऑफ वेरियस एक्ट्स दैट वाज पास्ड बाय द ब्रिटिश पार्लियामेंट फॉर द इंडियन स्टेट नो दे प्रोवाइड यू कमिंग बैक टू द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन दे प्रोवाइड यू विद द नेसेसरी envelop necessary rules and regulations necessary structures and functional clarifications with respect to the state so constitution ka kaam hi kya hai state ko ek guidance deni thi to wo guidance essentially yahan se aa rahi hai theek hai so essentially they created the structural and functional aspect of indian state okay लार्जली अब इसके अलावा क्या है इंडिया में हो रहा हमें मालूम है कि देर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड एज फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल और नेशनलिस्ट मूवमेंट विच इज ऑल्सो गोइंग ऑन इन इंडिया ड्यूरिंग द मॉडर्न इंडियन हिस्ट्री यस नाउ इन दिस फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल वेरियस वैल्यूज वर एस्पायर्ड फॉर एंड दीज वैल्यूज ऑल्सो फॉर्म द फ्रेमवर्क फॉर आर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन these values were elaborated in various sessions for example uh, if you take a look at uh, your document that i have provided you so there is karachi session there is the objective resolution of nehru okay there is uh, various kinds of debates that have happened in the uh, constituent assembly okay all those led to the creation of what you know today as our constitution it it supplied the essential value narrative as to you know what all things should be taken care of while creating a constitution so all those value narratives that were provided by the freedom struggle or the nationalist movement are also finding a space within the constitution so that is the value narrative okay then next thing that did happen is that you know the drafting committee headed by bhimrao ambedkar at that time baba saheb so this drafting committee create was generally you know had lot of lawyers in it like baba ambedkar was also a lawyer so what they did essentially they sort of borrowed a lot of things from lot of constitutions which were already available definitely government of india act 1935 was one of the sources of inspiration but apart from that for example there was british westminster type of government so yahan se humne जो पार्लियामेंट्री सिस्टम है वो बोरो किया ऐसे ही जो आयरलैंड है आयरिश कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन तो वहां से डायरेक्टिव प्रिंसिपल्स के बारे में वर्कआउट किया गया यूएसए से जो प्रेसिडेंट की पोजीशन है या जो जुडिशियल सिस्टम के बारे में चीजें हैं वो उठाई गई तो ये आप सबने एनसीआर के अंदर बेसिक्स पढ़ रखे हैं ठीक है कि कहाँ से क्या बोरो किया गया कैनेडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन से कंकरेंट लिस्ट का वर्कआउट किया गया फेडरल स्ट्रक्चर को उठाया गया तो ये जो सारी चीजें हैं धीरे धीरे इन सब ने भी एक कॉस्मोपॉलिटन सेंस इंडिया में एज इट इज बिल्ड किया दे बोरोड अ लॉर्ड ऑफ थिंग्स फ्रॉम लॉर्ड ऑफ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन दिस कॉस्मोपॉलिटन सेंस प्रोवाइड्स अ वर्ल्ड वाइड कैरेक्टर और अ रिच हेरिटेज टू द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ओके सो दिस बी अनदर कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स फॉर द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन टू बी today all these characteristics are collectively defining the working and the nature of indian constitution and that's what the upsc is asking from time to time in terms of what is to be studied in indian constitution wohi cheeze maine aapke jo questions hain unke andar bhi as it is enumerate ki hain so let's work on that okay let me take you to the document and show you how these things are to be dealt with 
let's see. The first question is, the Indian constitution creates a functional overlap between the legislature, executive and judiciary. Then the Indian constitution is in a significant sense, a cosmopolitan constitution. ये सारी चीजें कहने का मतलब यही है जो अभी हमने पीछे पीछे देखा इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इज एन अमेलगमेशन ऑफ ग्लोबल आउटलुक एंड एक्सपीरियंस गेन ड्यूरिंग द फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल नेशनलिस्ट मूवमेंट से वैल्यू नेरेटिव क्या आया इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बैलेंसेस प्रोसीडरल नॉर्म्स एंड फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी इन अडेप्टिंग टू दी चेंजिंग नीड्स ऑफ सोसाइटी सो इट्स अ लिविंग कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इट्स नॉट लैक की एक बार बना दिया बाद में कभी चेंज नहीं करेंगे जवाहरलाल नेहरू इंडिया फाउंडिंग स्टेटमेंट वॉज अ ग्रेट फिगर हुई ट्रांसेंडेड national boundaries comment so basically the ideas of jawaharlal nehru provided the value narrative much of the value narrative that we have in indian constitution today then the constitution of india makes center strong than the state stronger than the states and provides a quasi federal polity so this is again the nature of indian constitution then fraternity remains the least understood and least discussed and least practiced of the four pillars of the constitutional morality spelt out in the preamble of india और पिलर्स कौन से हैं जस्टिस लिबर्टी इक्वालिटी एंड फटर्निटी तो जस्टिस लिबर्टी इक्वालिटी में तो लोग आमतौर पे काम करते हैं फटर्निटी दैट मींस कॉमन फादरहुड या ब्रदरहुड उसके ऊपर काम नहीं करते या देन इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बैलेंसेस प्रोसीडरल नॉर्म्स एंड फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी इन अडॉप्टिंग टू चेंजिंग नीड्स ही वही है तो बेसिकली अमेंड भी कर सकते हो अमेंड करना मुश्किल भी है और कुछ चीजें अमेंड करना आसान भी है देन डिस्क्राइब द प्रोसीजर ऑफ अमेंडमेंट of the constitution under article 368 and why this amendment procedure has often been criticized isme kya problems aati hain challenges kya hain then indian constitution is federal in nature but unitary in soul examine so ye sare aspects wohi hain jo aapne abhi dekhe then basic structure this is the further evolving aspect of indian constitution post independence so supreme court ki verdicts ke dwara for example in the keshav nand bharti case 1973 जब वो ये चेक कर रहे थे कि क्या फंडामेंटल राइट्स अमेंडेबल है या नहीं इस क्वेश्चन के ऊपर डिबेट कर रहे थे तो उन्होंने ये कहा कि ठीक है पार्लियामेंट हर चीज को अमेंड कर सकते हैं कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन के अंदर एक्सेप्ट फॉर द बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर तो ये एक एंगल जो है वो यहाँ पे निकल के आया ठीक है देन वट डू यू अंडरस्टैंड बाई द बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर डॉक्टर सो डिस्कस इट्स एवोल्यूशन एंड सिग्निफिकेंस एंड स्ट्रेंथनिंग द डेमोक्रेसी ये सारी एस्पेक्ट जो है कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन से स्ट्रेट अवे ड्रॉन तो आज हम यहाँ तक बीस पेज तक जो क्वेश्चन आंसर्स हैं उनको भी साथ साथ में वर्कआउट करेंगे लेट्स हैव अ लुक द फर्स्ट वन सो इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन क्रिएट्स अ फंक्शनल ओवरलैप बिटवीन द लेजिस्लेचर एग्जीक्यूटिव एंड जुडिशरी सो देखिए सो डेमोक्रेटिक कंट्रीज यूज द डॉक्ट्रिन ऑफ सेपरेशन ऑफ पावर फॉर अवॉइडिंग कॉन्फ्लिक्ट बिटवीन वेरियस ऑर्गन ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट चार्ल्स के मॉन्टेस ऑफ द टू मॉडल्स ऑफ सेपरेशन कॉमनली फॉलोड वन प्रोवाइड्स फॉर अ रिजिड सेपरेशन ऑफ थ्री ऑर्गन जैसे कि यूएसए एंड दी अदर इज अ लूजर सेपरेशन एज इन ब्रिटेन वेस्ट मिनिस्टर मॉडल सो द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन प्रोवाइड्स फॉर अ थर्ड मॉडल ऑफ सेपरेशन ऑफ पावर्स वाइल देर इज अ रिकोगशन ऑफ लेजिस्लेचर एग्जीक्यूटिव जुडिशरी अलग अलग बॉडीज हैं इट डज नॉट एक्सप्रेसली वेस्ट द डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ पावर्स इन डिफरेंट ऑर्गन ऑफ स्टेट nor is there any exclusivity in nature of functions to be performed by them overlapping hai kehne ka matlab ye functional overlap is cheez ko bada karke likhne ka tarika ye chhota karke likhne ka system sirf itna sa hai it is a functional overlap between different forms of government other kind of overlap can be a dysfunctional overlap jahan pe ek organ dusre ko kaam hi nahi karne de raha functional overlap ka essentially matlab kya hota hai कि जब एक ऑर्गन काम कर रहा है तो दूसरा उसको सप्लीमेंट और कॉम्प्लीमेंट करता है ठीक है इट इज द पर्पस ऑफ क्रिएटिंग सच काइंड ऑफ अ फंक्शनल ओवरलैप इज नॉट टू हिंडर द वर्क ऑफ वन ऑर्गन बाय द अदर नो नॉट एट ऑल देन दैट अमाउंट्स टू समथिंग कॉल्ड एज ओवर रीच जैसे फॉर एग्जाम्पल जुडिशरी के लिए बोलते हैं कि जुडिशरी के लिए देर कैन बी समथिंग कॉल्ड एज जुडिशियल एक्टिविज्म this is good this is where the judiciary sometimes fills the vacuum in which the legislature and executive have failed to perform that's where it is supplementing and complementing the work of legislature and executive but then there is also a, a phrase called as judicial overreach jisme judiciary legislature and executive ko kaam hi nahi karne de raha apne hisab se jaan boojh ke pareshan kar raha hai halaki elected government ko kaam karne dena chahiye 
हम मान लिया कि जुडिशरी को ज्यादा अकल हो सकती है वो बहुत पढ़े लिखे लोग हैं और उन, उनके पास एक सुप्रीम uh, कोर्ट को जो दर्जा दिया गया है दैट इज दी फाइनल इंटरप्रेटिंग अथॉरिटी ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन वो डेफिनेटली रिस्पेक्टेबल है एट द सेम टाइम जुडिशरी इज नॉट इलेक्टेड टू रन द गवर्नमेंट द इलेक्टेड गवर्नमेंट इज देयर टू रन द गवर्नमेंट यस सो दैट्स द टास्क ऑफ द लेजिस्लेचर एंड द एग्जेक्टिव सो लेट देम डू द टास्क सो दैट्स वेयर वी से ओवर रीच ज्यादा भी नहीं परेशान करना तो एक्टिविज्म की हद तक ठीक है सप्लीमेंटिंग एंड कॉम्प्लीमेंटिंग की हद तक ठीक है दैट्स द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस वर्ड फंक्शनल ओवरलैप ठीक है अब ये फंक्शनल ओवरलैप क्वेश्चन में कैसे डिमांडेड है ध्यान से देखो सो द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन क्रिएट्स अ फंक्शनल ओवरलैप बिटवीन द लेजिस्लेचर एग्जेक्टिव एंड जुडिशरी एक्सप्लेन सो यही फंक्शनल ओवरलैप ही एक्सप्लेन करना है सप्लीमेंटरिंग एंड कॉम्प्लीमेंटिंग रोल एक्सप्लेन करना है सो सी so parliament determines the number of judges to be appointed in the supreme court and has the power to remove the judges of supreme court and high court by impeachment terms and conditions of service in, including salaries of judges are also subject to legislative control then although the power of legislation is vested in parliament the executive predominates the legislative process as bills are largely introduced by the executive in the parliament or state legislature aisa hai ek to गवर्नमेंट बिल्स हैं जो काउंसिल ऑफ मिनिस्टर्स लेके आते हैं और एक प्राइवेट मेंबर बिल है जो काउंसिल ऑफ मिनिस्टर छोड़ के कोई भी और लेके आ रहा है तो प्राइवेट मेंबर बिल हमेशा कम ही होते हैं एग्जेक्टिव में जो मिनिस्टर्स हैं काउंसिल ऑफ मिनिस्टर का पार्ट है वही ज्यादातर बिल्स को लेके आएंगे थ्रू डेलीगेटेड लेजिस्लेशन दार्लियामेंट एम्पावर्स दी एग्जेक्यूटिव टू मेक लॉज वेयर इट इज अनएबल टू डू सो डेलीगेटेड लेजिस्लेशन मतलब सबॉर्डिनेट लेजिस्लेशन ठीक है एक तो लेजिस्लेचर लॉ बनाता है अब वो सुप्रीम है लेकिन कई बार लेजिस्लेचर क्या करेगा एक ब्रॉड लेजिस्लेशन क्रिएट करेगा और जो उसकी फाइनल डिटेल्स होंगी वो एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव अथॉरिटीज पे छोड़ देगा कि आप अपनी टेरिटरी के हिसाब से उनको एडजस्ट करके चला लीजिए ठीक है क्योंकि शायद आपके स्टेट या आपके डिस्ट्रिक्ट लेवल पे लॉ के अंदर थोड़े चेंजेस करके उसको इंप्लीमेंट करने का ज्यादा फायदा हो इसलिए ये फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी प्रोवाइड करना जरूरी होता है ठीक है आप इसकी नेसेसिटी यहां से समझ सकते हो कि अगर हमारे पार्लियामेंट में 45 लॉज पास होंगे ना तो डेलीगेटेड लेजिस्लेशन के लेवल पे शायद साढ़े चार हजार लॉज पास हो जाएंगे पैंतालीस सौ इन वेरियस डिस्ट्रिक्ट इन वेरियस स्टेट लेवल एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव बॉडीज एंड सो ऑन Based upon those forty-five laws, so this necessity is to be able to adapt the law to the ongoing circumstances in which it is going to be implemented. So, this necessity के चलते ये काम होता है. The executive exercises judicial powers under several provisions. For instance, it has the ability, in the name of president, to decide whether the members of a house of parliament have become disqualified to continue as such. तो एग्जेक्टिव के पावर पास भी ये वाली जुडिशियल पावर है कि मेंबर पार्लियामेंट को कभी हटाया जा सकता है काउंसिल ऑफ मिनिस्टर्स दे आर देयर एज पर दी वो कहते हैं विश ऑफ द प्रेसिडेंट या बट इट्स नॉट एक्चुअली द विश ऑफ द प्रेसिडेंट इट्स द विश ऑफ द प्राइम मिनिस्टर दैट इज कन्वेड थ्रू द प्रेसिडेंट नाउ द एग्जेक्टिव ऑल्सो स्टाफ द एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव ट्राइब्यूनल्स सेटअप अंडर आर्टिकल थ्री कैपिटल ए एज वेल एज अदर ट्राइब्यूनल्स अंडर 323b to discharge the functions earlier carried out by courts administrative tribunals mein jo government administration ke part hain log unke salaries unki placement unki grievance redressal unki pension in sab ke cases sune jaate hain to inko judiciary se alag rakha jata hai aur yahan pe zyada tar executive hi hai jo usko judge bhi kar raha hai theek hai 323b ke tahat koi bhi tribunal banaya ja sakta hai jaise fast disposal of cases ke liye फॉर एग्जाम्पल पासपोर्ट रिलेटेड केसेस आ रहे हैं तो उनको लेके स्टेट में एक एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव ट्राइब्यूनल बना रहे हैं कि भाई फटाफट से सारे पासपोर्ट के केसेस निपटा दो लैंड रेवेन्यू के साथ रिलेटेड केसेस आ रहे हैं तो उसके लिए एक ट्राइब्यूनल बना देंगे बिजली के बिल के साथ कुछ केसेस आ जाए तो उसका ट्राइब्यूनल बना के निपटारा हो सकता है और हाईकोर्ट इनको क्रिएट कर सकता है कभी भी ठीक है देन सुप्रीम कोर्ट हेल्ड इन केशव नंद भारती केस दैट द पावर टू अमेंड द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन अंडर आर्टिकल थ्री सिक्सटी एट डिड नॉट एक्सटेंड टू अमेंडिंग द बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन In this way, the court controls the legislative extremism. 
सो एसेंशली कोई भी लॉ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन को ही ना बदल के रख दे उसके बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर को ना बदल के रख दे तो उससे बचने के लिए केशवनंद भारती केस में ये एक वर्ड एक दे दी गई थी बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर हालांकि बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर क्या है ये डिफाइंड नहीं है सुप्रीम कोर्ट नेवर वेंट ऑन टू द एक्सटेंट ऑफ सेइंग दिस इज इट व्हाई सो दैट इट हैज अ फ्लेक्सिबल टूल जो किसी भी सिचुएशन में यूज हो जाए अगर आगे जाके ये लगे कि कुछ एक पर्टिकुलर चीज आई है जो जुडिशरी को अपील नहीं कर रही या बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर को वाकई में खराब कर रही है so then in both cases this can be applied and that particular thing can be waived off for example the coming of national judicial appointment commission 99th constitutional amendment act ke तहत judiciary ki appointment karne ke liye government ne ye tool create kiya and jack aur judiciary ne uh, us time pe jo supreme court ke judge the chief justice so he was kahar singh so unhone kaha ki nahi bhai this is unconstitutional aur khatam kar diya after a long hearing of course so under the writ of mandamus the courts command a public official body corporation subordinate courts or tribunals or government asking them to perform their duties we command that's the meaning of mandamus then the constitutional organization of power in different organs of the governance in an overlapping for, uh, fashion was done to create the structure of checks and balances to prevent any organ from exercising too much power so that's why this overlapping structure was created the delicate balancing of power among the legislature executive and judiciary was a result of india's sui generis social economic and political scenario and the structure set up in this manner continues to efficiently serve our purposes till date so jo banaya gaya wo acha banaya gaya aur usi ke basis pe sab kaam badhiya chal raha hai so this is the way you handle the question okay now next question indian constitution is in a significant sense a cosmopolitan constitution elucidate see what is the meaning of this word cosmopolitan and what is the meaning of this directive elucidate elucidate ka matlab hai you have to state certain examples you have to justify a particular point that has been stated in the statement plus give examples that's the task ओके नाउ अभी क्वेश्चन का कॉन्टेक्स्ट क्या है हाँ जी हेलो हेलो लाइक ए सेट दिस इज द डायरेक्टिव अभी कीवर्ड पे आते हैं व्हाट इज द कॉन्टेक्स्ट श्रुति इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन गुड that's the context okay now what is the keyword or key phrase sumeda cosmopolitan cosmopolitan kya hum cosmopolitan ki baat karenge ya significant sense ki baat karenge significant sense so kya ye dono alag alag hain इट्स सिग्निफिकेंटली कॉस्मोपॉलिटन कॉमा है ना बीच में ठीक है मतलब सिग्निफिकेंटली बोरोड है ये शो करना है सारे सारे आंसर के अंदर हमारा स्ट्रेस इस चीज पे रहना चाहिए ओके सो दिस द की वर्ड सिग्निफिकेंटली बोरोड और कॉस्मोपॉलिटन सो लेट सी सो कॉस्मोपॉलिटन इज द आइडिया ऑफ यूनिवर्सलिज्म विच बिलीव दैट ऑल ह्यूमैनिटी रिगार्डलेस ऑफ पोलिटिकल एंड सोशल एफिलिएशन are citizens of a single community okay indian constitution can be called as cosmopolitan constitution as it echoes the ideas of universalism and is not constrained by narrow political reality of the time of its formation so we borrowed from many sources that's what we have to talk about here so in principle for example liberty equality fraternity were taken from french revolution yeah and they have a meaning for all the human beings across boundaries similarly peace and prosperity they are the important aspects then the english common law had a great deal of effect on the creation of our constitution the government of india act 1935 provided a lot of uh, our constitution almost 66% of it it borrowed directive principles of state policy from the irish constitution american debates over due process of law made a lot of changes into how we conceive our social challenges and indian politics so lot of global constitutional practices were incorporated while making 
our constitution. That's why it is sometimes even referred to as the bag of borrows. This is the cosmopolitan culture. And this cosmopolitan culture is also embedded in the belief system of Vasudeva Kutumbukam. That is, the world is a family and humanity is one. That is embedded into the basic social structure of India. Yeah. So that's how it is cosmopolitan. And then it's an amalgamation of global outlook and experiences gained during the freedom struggle. Comment. Now again, it's a comment. The comment has to be for and against. Yes or no? So yahan pe comment ki bidaya agar discuss ho, to a question ka answer likhna asaan hai. Examine ho, to bhi asaan hai. Explain ho, to bhi asaan hai. Comment makes it a little difficult. Okay, let's see. So the constitution was made by the constituent assembly which has been elected for undivided India. It held its first meeting on 9th December 1946 and the constitution of India came into effect on 26 January 1950. That's the Republic Day. Now, the experience gains during the freedom struggle. So one, there is Government of India Act 1935. Then there is the objective resolution. Then Motilal Nehru provided a drafted constitution 1928. The Karachi session of International Congress discussed the fundamental rights and the economic policy. And there have been always an impetus upon providing equal representation to all, including women, and to bring social and political equity and rule by leaders focused on, people's leaders focused on democracy. So due to caste and class deficiencies rooted in the religious system, so we wanted a constitution that emphasizes equality. Okay. So these are the experiences we gained from the freedom struggle. So this is the comment in the comment nature only. Then the global outlook. So the Russian revolution gave us the idea of social and economic and political justice. Okay. Preamble can be written justice that is social, economic and political. French revolution gave us the ideas of liberty, equality and fraternity along with the idea of republic. British constitution gave us the ideas of parliamentary form of government, rule of law, lawmaking process, and the procedure established by law. The United States constitution gave us the ideas of preamble, fundamental rights, federal structure of the government, electoral college, independence of judiciary, judicial review, and the equal protection under the law. Australian constitution, in terms of freedom of trade and commerce within the country and between the states, and also the idea of concurrent list. Emergency provision under Article 356, national emergency is there. So this is from the Weimar Constitution of Germany. Then the Canadian Constitution, so a quasi-federal form of government with residual powers retained by the central government. So all these ideas are coming from the global aspect. So our constitution therefore was not prepared in a haste, but it has an evolution that comes decades before India became independent in 1947. And the makers presented the nation, the document that enshrined the fundamental values and highest aspirations shared by the people. Maybe at the time of Indian history or maybe even at the global level. So this is one of the reasons why this is most intricately crafted document and has not only survived but become a living reality. That means as per time it is able to adapt. When so many other constitutions have perished with the paper they were first written on. So over a period of time, something that survives is something that is good enough. Okay. Because you know, Kalamne Padatha Darwin in the survival of the fittest. Yeah. Then Indian constitution balances procedural norms and flexibility in adapting the changing needs, adapting to changing needs of society. Discuss. So one of the basic things that our constitution has is its amendability, but the amending aspect is not that easy also. So that's why we call it a bit rigid. Let's see. So rigidity and procedural norms. So one is the basic structure, which cannot be changed as is defined by the Keshav and the Bharti case, which is to retain the fundamental spirit of the constitution. One, nobody knows what it is, but a lot of things have been included in the basic structure over a period of time. Second is the special majority amendment. So under Article 368, the, there is a requirement of special majority. That is the majority of total members of the House plus 
majority of two third of the members present and voting. Only then you will be able to pass a constitutional amendment bill. Yeah, so that is the issue here. So it requires special majority. Then separate jurisdiction. So here, Indian polity being quasi-federal, it has detailed polity and administrative principles to demarcate the rules and responsibilities of legislature, judiciary, and executive. So, but a exact, succinct matter is the constitution can be given for the working of various institutions in Indian polity. So that there is no uh, confusion, so to say. That's what they're trying to avoid. Then, flexibility. So most parts of Indian constitution can be amended by simple majority. Simple majority means more than half of the people present and voting. Simply 50% plus one of people present and voting. This means what? In our Lok Sabha, there are 545 members. The quorum requires at least quorum means minimum number of people that are to be there to have a session of the parliament. So 10% is the quorum. That means even if 55 people are sitting, you can have the session. Now in the out of this 55, more than half plus one. Kitna hua? 28 people? Yeah. So 28 people, if they say yes to something, then that can be done. The constitution can be amended. Okay. Just 28 people being there to say yes. Out of the 55, if they say yes, it is done. Or government can read so kitne log jo majority say election jeet kya hai lok sabha mein to wo to aram se kar lenge then flexibility allows constitution to adjust as per changed socio economic circumstances legislative amendments like rational abrogation of article 370 jiske through special status was given to jammu and kashmir the 24th and 25th amendment acts so all of them are examples of the same so that is the fluidity in the amending process so, dono cheeze dikhani hai is question ke andar rigid bhi dikhana hai aur fluid bhi dikhana hai ek taraf procedural norms hain jiski wajah se hamare constitution mein certain amount of rigidity hai jo important cheeze hain wo preserve karte rahe but at the same time it is a living document it is able to adapt as per changing needs of society and thereby usme flexibility bhi hai bahut sari cheeze aap simple majority se badal sakte hain that's the thing that is to be important be taken care of in this okay then thereafter next question Jawaharlal Nehru, India's founding statement was a great figure whose legacy transcended the national boundaries. Comment. So Nehruvian ideals, so you know, they are envisioned in the objective resolution, and it steered the Constituent Assembly to draw up the philosophy of Indian Constitution, that is the preamble. So जो आपको आज preamble नजर आता है, वो Nehru के द्वारा दी गई objective resolution ही है. Then the nature of Nehruvian way of politics, that is debate and deliberation. Led to the respect of parliamentary procedure, abiding faith in constitutional system. Essentially, Nehru was a kind of person who would always give space to the opposition that they should be able to represent their opinion. For example, B. R. Ambedkar was a staunch critic of Nehru, yet he was made the chairman of the drafting committee of the constitution, which is the most important document to be coming in future. Imagine. Yeah. So back in the day, you know, Congress was like an umbrella body. It represented not only its own voice, but also the voice of the opponents. Imagine. So that was the stature of Nehru. This is why the democratic principles, the debate, the deliberation, all that came alive during the Nehruvian era in India. Today, if anybody has to dissent or debate or deliberate upon anything, they risk being treated as anti-nationals. So it is something that is missing from Indian political scene. The inclusiveness, okay? Or you can keep, say political inclusiveness or parliamentary inclusiveness. Now, Nehru also believed in democracy at grassroots levels in India, that is the Panchayati Raj system. Although at the time of Nehru, Panchayati Raj only existed in the directive principles of state policy. Never became a reality in the form of 73rd and 74th Constitutional Amendment Acts. That's something that was achieved by P.V. Narasimha Rao. An idea of secularism. So Nehru believed that India belonged to all who had contributed to its history and civilization, not just to freedom struggle. He's saying to its history and civilization. Yeah. 
and that majority community had a special obligation to protect the rights and promote the well-being of minorities to hamari zimmedari hai majority community ke ki minority ka dhyan rakhe this helped building the narrative of unity in diversity and that basically created something called as secularism okay so then there is democratic socialism so through a planned economic approach as inspired from ussr back in the day nehru envisaged that in the land of extreme poverty and inequality the objective of the government policy must be the welfare of the poorest and the most deprived and most marginalized of the people it was never seen as the welfare of the majority or the rich or something like that they will always take care of the poorest of the poor the non alignment movement as we discussed in one of our lectures about nato and warsaw yeah so at the time of cold war that started right after the second world war so here nehru gave the aspect of non alignment so the world was becoming bipolar one was joining the warsaw the one was joining nato that is a block led by usa or the block led by ussr so nehru avoided joining any kind of block politics and tried to steer clear in terms of independence and sovereignty so that the nation is not being either inspired or pressurized by any of the military blocks to take any of the political decisions okay so after two centuries of british rule nehru was determined to protect the country's strategic autonomy without compromising independence by aligning itself to either of the superpowers in cold war so this policy of nam made india one of the most distinguished leaders of the third world solidarity third world developing countries generally and reached out to the rest of the colonized world and forged a joint front against colonialism and reinvented imperialism this is a kind of intervention only in the state and trying to politically economically or socially influence a particular another country that is the reinvented imperialism of the cold war era that's something we steered clear of and did not get embroiled into okay so that's the importance of jawala nehru then the constitution of india makes the center stronger than the states and provides a quasi federal polity discuss ab ye center state relations ka aspect hai and it's another uh, area which helps us understand the nature of indian constitution so here in see जब हम बोलते हैं ना फेडरल कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन या फेडरल सिस्टम इसका मतलब क्या होता है पहले तो सिंपली देख लीजिए एक है यूनिटरी फॉर्म ऑफ गवर्नमेंट और एक है फेडरल फॉर्म ऑफ गवर्नमेंट यूनिटरी फॉर्म ऑफ गवर्नमेंट में सारी पावर सेंटर के पास और फेडरल फॉर्म ऑफ गवर्नमेंट के पास सारी पावर स्टेट के पास ये दो एक्सट्रीम्स हैं इन दोनों के बीच में कुछ भी जो है दैट इज कैन बी कॉल्ड एज क्वाजी फेडरल सो इन इंडिया इट इज मोर यूनिटरी दैन फेडरल सो इंडिया विल स्टे समवेयर हियर on the scale okay let's see so federal system ki kuch characteristics hain they are dual system of administration to hamare yahan pe bhi state government alag hai central government alag hai dono mein alag alag legislatures hain division of power to india mein constitution ke andar ek seventh schedule hai to usme state list concurrent list union list is tarah se teen list ki gayi hain state list jo hai uske andar us tarah ke एरियाज हैं जिसपे सिर्फ स्टेट की ही चलेगी चाहे वो लॉ बना रहा है चाहे वो कोई एग्जीक्यूटिव डिसीजन ले रहा है यूनियन लिस्ट में सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट की चलेगी कंक्रेंट लिस्ट में दोनों अपनी अपनी तरफ से लॉ बना सकते हैं लेकिन अगर यूनियन भी लॉ बनाएगा तो यूनियन की लॉ प्रिवेल करेगी स्टेट गवर्नमेंट की लॉ प्रिवेल नहीं करेगी सो दैट्स द डिविजन ऑफ पावर दैट्स क्लियरली मैंशन इन सेवन शेड्यूल ऑफ इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन देन इट्स अ रिटर्न कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन दैट मीन्स इट हैज सर्टन अमाउंट ऑफ रिजिडिटी स्टैब्लिशमेंट then there is supremacy of the constitution that is kisi ki nahi chalti india mein siway constitution ke chahe wo supreme court hai to wo bhi constitution ke basis pe hi apna decision dega the rigidity of the constitution not easily amendable independent judiciary so not being influenced by the legislature or the executive bicameralism so we have a lower house and a upper house all these are the parameters of a federal system india mein ye sare parameters hain but indian constitution also contains a large number of unitary or non federal features moreover article 1 of the indian constitution that describes india as a union of states 
which itself means that the states have no right to secede from the union you know at this point of time now so it's a indestructible union of destructible states ye bhi bolte hain kabhi kabhi to usme kya hota hai ki state ko to jab marzi jod tod do aap jaise andhra pradesh mein se do state ban gaye telangana aur andhra pradesh jammu kashmir ko as a state uska status hi khatam karke ut bana diya gaya जे एंड के अलग कर दिया लद्दाख अलग कर दिया सो दैट्स वाई द स्टेट इन इंडिया आर डिस्ट्रक्टेबल हमारे यहाँ पे बड़ा सिंपल सा प्रोसीजर है आर्टिकल थ्री और फोर के अंदर गिवन है सिंपल मेजोरिटी के तहत पार्लियामेंट में बिल दायर करके आप किसी भी स्टेट का नाम टेरिटरी सब कुछ चेंज कर सकते हैं ठीक है तो दैट्स वाई वी आर कंसीविंग दैट इंडियन यू नो यूनियन इज अ यू नो इनडिस्ट्रक्टेबल यूनियन ऑफ डिस्ट्रक्टेबल स्टेट इस तरह से कहा जाता है इन इक्विटेबल डिविजन ऑफ पावर लेट्स सो द डिविजन ऑफ पावर इज इन फेवर ऑफ सेंटर एंड हाईली इन इक्विटेबल फ्रॉम द फेडरल एंगल एज द यूनियन लिस्ट कंटेन्स मोर इंपॉर्टेंट सब्जेक्ट लाइक डिफेंस करेंसी एक्सटर्नल अफेयर सिटीजनशिप रेलवे कम्युनिकेशन एक्सेट्रा द स्टेट लिस्ट दैन द स्टेट लिस्ट वहां पर इस तरह के बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट सब्जेक्ट नहीं है कुछ है कुछ नहीं और कंक्रेंट लिस्ट और रेजिडरी पावर एक तरह से सेंटर के पास ही है नो टेरिटोरियल इंटेग्रिटी ऑफ द स्टेट दैट मीन्स द पार्लियामेंट कैन बाई यूनिटरल एक्शन चेंज द एरिया बाउंड्री एंड नेम ऑफ एनी स्टेट इसलिए मैं कह रहा था इन डिस्ट्रक्टेबल यूनियन ऑफ डिस्ट्रक्टेबल स्टेट देन फ्लेक्सीबिलिटी so the constitution of india embodies not only the constitution of the center but also those of states so ek hi constitution hai jo dono ke liye kaam kar raha hai bulk of the constitution can be amended by unilateral action of the central parliament union parliament and the power to initiate the amendment only lies with the center not with the state constitution ko sirf central government change kar sakti hai state governments kuch nahi kar sakte then there are emergency provisions you got national emergency article 352 state emergency article 356 and financial emergency article 360 inke tahat sari power control sub center ke paas hi aa jata hai states kuch nahi kar pata theek hai so center becomes all powerful and state governments go into total control of the center it converts the federal structure into a unitary one without any formal amendment to the constitution jab tak chahiye tab tak aap is tarah se karke rakh sakte hain provided lok sabha aur rajya sabha hi karna chahe then the appointment of governor so you know governor is the head of the state and it's appointed by the president and he stays in the office during the pleasure of the president now here he is working like an agent of the center most of the time because they are political placements because the president also appoints him on the verdict given by the prime minister heading the council of ministers okay india mein article 74 hai constitution ke andar wo kehta hai the president shall act on the aid and advice provided by the council of ministers headed by prime minister to so, unke kehne pe hi kaam karenge article 53 bolta hai that president is the head of the executive theek hai maan liya lekin ye head of the executive kaam kiske kehne pe karega council of ministers headed by the prime minister to jo wo kahenge wo kahega theek hai तो इस तरह से सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट की जो इंटरवेंशन है वो एब्सोल्यूट है इन द वर्किंग ऑफ स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स देन इंटीग्रेटेड कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल ऑफिसर्स सो इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन प्रोवाइड्स फॉर एन इंटीग्रेटेड ऑडिट मशीनरी इलेक्शन कमीशन एंड स्टेट्स हैव नो कंट्रोल ओवर दीज ऑफिसर्स सो फॉर एग्जांपल वी गॉट अ सीएजी वी गॉट एन इलेक्शन कमीशन वी गॉट नेशनल ग्रीन ट्राइब्यूनल बट सो मेनी अदर बॉडीज नेशनल ह्यूमन राइट कमीशन एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा अब इसमें स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स ने कुछ नहीं करना होता ठीक है फीचर्स लाइक सिंगल सिटीजनशिप इंटीग्रेटेड जुडिशरी ऑल इंडिया सर्विसेज एक्सेट्रा आल्सो सिग्निफाई ए सेंट्रलाइजिंग टेंट तो स्टेट सिटीजनशिप हमारे यहां पे अलग नहीं है जैसे यूएसए के अंदर ड्यूअल सिटीजनशिप का कांसेप्ट है देयर द सिटीजन इज अ सिटीजन ऑफ अमेरिका एज़ वेल एज़ ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर स्टेट तो ही इज सब्जेक्टेड टू डिफरेंट सेट ऑफ लॉज व्हेन ही इज अ सिटीजन ऑफ पर्टिकुलर स्टेट या इंटीग्रेटेड जुडिशरी का सिस्टम क्या है कि सारे इंडिया में एक ही जुडिशरी है अल्टीमेटली सुप्रीम कोर्ट इज सुप्रीम इन टू वन बेसिक पिरामिड ऑल इंडिया सर्विसेज लाइक इंडियन एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव सर्विसेज इंडियन पुलिस सर्विसेज एंड इंडियन फॉरेस्ट सर्विसेज ऑल ऑफ देम आर कंट्रोल्ड बाय द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट 
in terms of what they will be uh, doing and where they will be doing it. And they report to the central government. They don't report much to the state government. Although they work in consonance with the state government, but entire structure and the entire functionality is governed or controlled by the center. So that way we are more tilted towards a union kind of a government than to a federal kind of a government. Okay. Then fraternity remains the least understood and uh, least discussed and least practiced of the four pillars. So let's see. So char pillars concept, justice, liberty, equality, and fraternity. A fraternity kya essential meaning kya hai, wo batauge. All citizens should behave as members of the same family. No one should be uh, treat a fellow citizen as inferior. Okay. So let's see. So the meaning of fraternity in Indian context. The sense of common brotherhood transcending religion, language, regional and sectional diversities. Article 51A is explained in Article 51A and this is to be promoted through single citizenship despite this communal violence like the 2002 Gujarat riots, ongoing citizenship amending act, protest and violence, north south divides based on language and other social disturbances due to differences in diversity and inability to come to common terms for living in harmony are common. Dignity of individuals by maintaining material betterment of individual and the democratic setup. Challenges to this include income inequality based on caste, gender, low caste status of women like rape, domestic violence, less economic participation. Challenges to democratic setup like use of money and muscle power in election. In sub ki wajah se jo fraternity ka aspect hai ya ambition hai ya moral value hai wo erode hoti chali jati hai. So unity and integrity of the nation at both levels, psychological and territorial, still is challenged. So still secessionist movements like the demand for greater Nagalim, lack of unified polity manifested in temporary provision for certain states like Article 371, border disputes, especially with Pakistan and China. At the psychological level, issues including communalism, regionalism and linguism, etc. deter the moral value of fraternity in India. So basically, deterrence discuss karne hai, so these are deterrence yahan pe hai. Okay. Then. Now this is the same question we discussed it earlier. Is the answer can the three points different and Baki sub same. Describe the procedure of amendment of the Constitution of India under Article 368. Why this amending procedure has been often criticized? So, ab jab ye pooch liya jaye, to iske saath ye batana zaruri hai ki Article 368 like karta hai Part 20 of the Constitution. And it deals with the powers of the parliament to amend the constitution and the procedure thereof. So, ye likha hua uske, title text mein likha hai. So, wohi humne yahan pe mention kar diya. Uske baal, procedure for amendment hai kya? So, wo pura procedure hai. That is, the amendment of the constitution can be initiated only by introduction of a bill, that is the constitutional amendment bill, in either house of the parliament and not in state legislature. The bill can be introduced by either a minister or a private member and does not require prior permission of the president. The bill must be passed in each house by a special majority, that is majority of total membership of the house and majority of two thirds of the members of the house present and voting. Each house must pass the bill separately. No provision for holding joint sitting. Taki Lok Sabha mein ab zyada strength hai to wo usko influence na kare. If the bill seeks to amend the federal provisions of the constitution, it must also be ratified by the legislature of half of the states by simple majority. states ko bhi impact karta hai, to more than 50% of the states should pass them in their state legislative assembly also through a purpose of a bill or something. This is GST, hai, to GST ke liye SGST Act, hai, State Goods and Services Tax Act. So, jab GST laya gaya, to her state has SGST Act apne mein pe pass kiya. Phir ja ke GST lagu ho Then more than half ko pehle karna tha. 
लेकिन ऑलमोस्ट फिर सबने कर ही दिया अल्टीमेटली जम्मू एंड कश्मीर और वेस्ट बंगाल थे जिन्होंने शुरुआत में मना किया बाद में वो भी मान गए आफ्टर ड्यूली पास बाय बोथ हाउस ऑफ पार्लियामेंट एंड रेटिफाइड बाय द स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर वेयर एवर नेसेसरी द बिल इज प्रेजेंट टू द प्रेजिडेंट फॉर असेंट द प्रेजिडेंट कैन नाइदर विद होल्ड हिज असेंट नॉर रिटर्न द बिल फॉर रिकन्सिडरेशन after the president's assent the bill becomes an act and it's called as constitutional amendment act aur jo fir uski terms hain uske hisab se constitution chalega what is the criticism ab ye to procedure ho gaya dono cheeze puchi thi why this amendment procedure has been often criticized to iski bhi aapne heading banani hai hamesha the criticism kya hai there is no provision for a special body like the constitutional convention as in usa or the constituent assembly for amending the तो ये इसकी बजाय हमारा जो एग्जिस्टिंग पार्लियामेंट है वही ये करेगा द पावर टू इनिशिएट द अमेंडमेंट टू द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन लाइज विद द पार्लियामेंट एंड द स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर कैन नॉट इनिशिएट एनी बिल सो ये अपने आप में एक क्रिटिसिजम है तीसरा मेजर पार्ट ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन कैन बी अमेंडेड बाई पार्लियामेंट लोन आई दर बाई स्पेशल मेजोरिटी और बाय सिंपल मेजोरिटी इवन इफ इट इज इफेक्टिंग द स्टेट the constitution does not prescribe the time frame within which the state legislature should ratify or reject the amendment submitted to them it is also silent on the issues whether the states can withdraw their approval after recording the same ek bar ratify karne ke baad agar unko acha nahi laga to kya wo wapas ja sakte hain iske liye bhi koi procedure nahi hai there is no provision for holding joint sitting through which it can be debated halaki ye acha bhi hai bura bhi hai इसमें क्या होता है कि राज्यसभा इज एबल टू एक्ट लाइक अ चेक्स एंड बैलेंस हाउस ऑन लोकसभा राज्यसभा इज अ परमानेंट हाउस इट नेवर गेट्स डिजॉल्व वाई लोकसभा की टर्म है पांच साल तो कई बार इमीडिएट नीड ऑफ दिचुएशन या शॉर्ट टर्म विजन के साथ लोकसभा ऑपरेट कर सकता है उस शॉर्ट टर्म विजन को कर्टेल करने के लिए राज्यसभा बनाया गया है कि एज अ चेकिंग हाउस चेक्स एंड बैलेंस सिस्टम तो इस वजह से ये ठीक भी है पॉजिटिव भी है लेकिन यही क्रिटिसिज्म भी है कि डेडलॉक हो जाता है कई बार पैसेज ऑफ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बिल के ऊपर जैसे फॉर एग्जांपल क्रिएशन ऑफ पंचायती राज सो इट वाज इनटू अ डेडलॉक फॉर टू थ्री टाइम्स इवन द जीएसटी एक्ट लेड टू अ लॉट ऑफ डेडलॉक्स एंड देन फाइनली पुट बी पास्ड तो कई बार अच्छी लेजिस्लेशंस भी इस डेडलॉक की वजह से रुक जाते हैं क्योंकि राज्यसभा के अंदर ना आमतौर पे जो गवर्निंग एस्पेक्ट है जो भी गवर्नमेंट चल रही होगी उनको कई बार मेजोरिटी नहीं होती अब बीजेपी के पास तो अब जाके बनी है बिकॉज इट इज इन द सेकंड टर्म सो ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम इट हैज बिल्ड दैट मेजोरिटी इन राज्यसभा आल्सो बट शुरुआत में फर्स्ट टर्म के लिए जो 2014 से 19 का पीरियड है उस टाइम पे बीजेपी के पास भी वहां राज्यसभा में मेजोरिटी नहीं होती कांग्रेस के पास तो ये तो विद टाइम उन्होंने अपने बंदे अब वहां पर सेट कर लिए तो इस वजह से चल रहा है then indian constitution is federal in nature but unitary in soul it's the same question in a different format so again you have to give the same kind of an answer so yahan pe maine points format mein bataya so that it's easy for you to understand theek okay? hai then basic structure of the constitution so basic structure ke liye jaise humne baat kiya kishanand bharti case se basic structure ka aspect aata hai so let's see the functional overlap between the organs of the government undermines the principle of separation of power comment हमने ये ऊपर फंक्शनल ओवरलैप पड़ा था लेजिस्लेचर और एग्जीक्यूटिव तो ये कैसे सेपरेशन ऑफ पावर जो चार्ल्स टे मॉन्टेस्ट्री का प्रिंसिपल है उसके अगेंस्ट जाता है सो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन प्रोविजन इंश्योरिंग सेपरेशन ऑफ पावर आर फॉर एग्जाम्पल आर्टिकल फिफ्टी इट्स टेट चार टेक स्टेप्स टू सेपरेट जुडिशरी फ्रॉम द एग्जेक्टिव नाउ दिस इज समथिंग इन द शाल परस्पेक्टिव is also a part and parcel of directive principles of state policy which are non justiciable means you cannot take the government to court for not acting upon them fundamental rights are justiciable in nature means you can take the government to court but here they are non justiciable article 121 and 211 so judicial conduct of a judge of the supreme court and the high courts cannot be discussed in the parliament and the state legislature okay so that's another one alag alag rakha gaya hai article 122 and 212 validity of the proceeding of parliament and the state legislature cannot be called into question in any court parliamentary proceedings ko aap judiciary usko interpret nahi karega 
361, the president or the governor shall not be answerable to any court for the exercise and performance of the powers and duties of his office. Otherwise, there is something called as right to equality. Equality before the law is the key concept there. But president or governor ko exception diya gaya hai through Article 361. So executive is taken out of the purview of judiciary, head of the executive. Then the functional overlap. So, for example, in terms of judiciary and executive, kahan kahan pe legislature ka overlap aa hai. Let's see. So, legislature versus judiciary, impeachment and removal of judges, power to amend the laws declared ultra wires by the court and revalidating it. Court, let's say, kisi ek particular law ko bolta hai ki ye galat hai. So, legislature phir se ek bill leke aa sakta hai aur usko sahi karar de sakta hai. In case of breach of its privilege, it can punish the person concerned. So this is another way around. Yahan pe legislature bhi direct punishment de sakta hai. Then, with executive, legislature versus executive. So the head of each governmental ministry and members are the members of legislature only. Though, in no confidence vote, it can dissolve the government. So legislature mein, jaise mein kaha, parliament mein agar no confidence motion pass ho jai, to government hatai ja sakti hai. Power to assist the work of the executive. Impeachment of the president. Council of ministers on whose advice the president and the governor acts are elected members of the legislature. So essentially, ye legislature ke alag alag grounds hain jiske through wo judiciary ya executive ke saath interact karta hai. Okay? Lekin similarly, executive ke grounds hain judiciary or legislature ke saath, judiciary ke grounds hain legislature or executive ke saath. अब इस फंक्शनल ओवरलैपिंग की वजह से कई बार ट्रबल्स क्रिएट होते हैं जो इस क्वेश्चन के अंदर बेसिकली पूछा गया है वन इज अन अकाउंटेबिलिटी सो वन ऑफ द डिमेरिट्स इज दैट पर्टिकुलर ऑर्गन के नॉट बी हेल्ड अकाउंटेबल फॉर इट्स डिसीजन फॉर एग्जाम्पल जुडिशियल वर्डिक्ट इन टू जी एंड कोल ब्लॉक एलोकेशन केस अब सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने बोला कि टू जी स्पेक्ट्रम केस के अंदर एक सौ छब्बीस कंपनियां जिनको लाइसेंस दिया गया है वो लाइसेंस रद्द किया जाए और दोबारा से टू जी स्पेक्ट्रम की एलोकेशन की जाए मीन वाइल थ्री जी स्पेक्ट्रम आ गया और सारी कंपनियों को कहती मजे लग गए हमारे तो पैसे फंस जाने थे अगर ये नहीं होता तो अभी लाइसेंस कैंसिल हुआ तो पैसे भी तो वापस मिलेंगे ना गवर्नमेंट से अब उन्होंने पैसे थ्री जी में इन्वेस्ट किए टू जी खरीदा ही नहीं किसी ने तो गवर्नमेंट का तो नुकसान हो गया सोच के देखो आज भी टू जी स्पेक्ट्रम फालतू पड़ा हुआ खरीद ही नहीं रहा थ्री जी के बाद फोर जी फाइव जी की तरफ जा रहे हैं अब तो हम इनफैक्ट किसी के पास अगर 2G सिम हो तो वो चलेगा नहीं ठीक बात है कोल ब्लॉक एलोकेशन में उन्होंने सेम किया कि जिसको किया भी रद्द करो अभी उसके बाद आज तक हमें कोल के हमेशा सप्लाई में गड़बड़ आती है बिकॉज उतना एक्सट्रैक्ट नहीं हो पाता जितनी हमारी थर्मल पावर प्लांट्स की जरूरत है आज भी ज्यादातर एनर्जी इंडिया जो ड्राइव कर रहा है इलेक्ट्रिकल एनर्जी वो थर्मल पावर प्लांट से ही है तो अगर कोल ब्लॉक में रिफॉर्म नहीं किए जाते तो फिर कैसे चलेगा तो रिसेंटली आत्मनिर्भर भारत अभियान के तहत गवर्नमेंट ने कोल ब्लॉक में रिफॉर्म किया कि प्राइवेट सेक्टर को दे दो जो कह रहे थे ना कि लेजिस्लेचर नया बिल पास करके ये जुडिशरी की कोई वर्डिक्ट सेट कर सकता है तो वो यही किया उन्होंने तो कोल ब्लॉक सेक्टर के ही रिफॉर्म कर दिया कि भाई कोई भी प्राइवेट सेक्टर आए और माइनिंग करे और कोल सप्लाई करे दैट सेट कोल इंडिया लिमिटेड के परव्यू से निकाल देन इरोजन ऑफ फेथ सो रिपीटेड इंटरवेंशन ऑफ वन ऑर्गेन into another functioning can diminish the faith of people in the integrity quality and efficiency of other organs so chuna judiciary hamesha hi activism mode mein rahe overreach karta rahe legislature ko bole tumne galat kiya executive ko bole tumne galat kiya to hoga kya aapko lagega ki ye jo elected government hai ye to bekar hai to ye ek issue hai fir democratic politics kaise chalega representative politics kaise chalega accumulation of power so it undermines the spirit of democracy as too much accumulation of power in the organs of the government undermines the principles of check and balances so if one instrument becomes too strong let's say even the executive becomes too strong it is going to create troubles so these days the executive appears to be strong because it has sufficient number of seats in legislature the lok sabha as well as the rajya sabha so it is able to have its way most of the times yeah adverse effects on development so excessive infringement on each other's jurisdiction impedes smooth functioning of the government aapas mein ladte rahenge to kaam kaise kab karenge and this hinders public service and overall development so these are some of the 
issue areas as far as the functional overlapping tendency is concerned. Okay, the functional overlap to humne upar padhi liya tha. Then, what do you understand by the doctrine of basic structure? Discuss its evolution and significance in strengthening the democracy. So this was founded in by Indian judiciary, that's the Supreme Court, on 24th April 1973, in Keshav Nand Bharati case, and uh, it said that. to put a limitation on the amending powers of the parliament so that the basic structure of the basic law of the land cannot be amended in the exercise of its constituent power under the constitution article 368 ke तहत parliament jo hai wo constitution ko amend kar sakti hai lekin basic structure of the constitution ko nahi kar sakti lekin basic structure is not exactly defined by the supreme court although kuch ek parameters unhone bataye hain jaise ki rule of law sovereignty liberty republic judicial review separation of power secularism republican nature of india etc is tarah ke kuch aspects bataye hain jo time to time badhata chala jata hai supreme court as per requirement iski shuruaat kaise hui so sankari prasad case judgment aaya 1951 ke andar it the entire question started with the amendability of fundamental rights as you might already know so are they amendable to so, us context mein sab kuch chal raha hai theek hai so initially the judiciary was of the view that the amendment power of the parliament is unrestricted because it can amend any part of the constitution even the article 368 which provides the power to amend the parliament amend to the parliament then there was goloknath case 1967 see the situation in 1951 is this jin logon ne country ki independence ke liye ladai thi वो सब ही अभी गवर्नमेंट के अंदर हैं, पार्लियामेंट के अंदर हैं, नेहरू एंड ऑल सरदार पटेल जुडिशरी को अभी कोई नहीं जानता इन लीडर के साथ पूरी जनता कटे तो जुडिशरी की अभी हिम्मत नहीं है कि इनके अगेंस्ट कुछ बोले 1964 में नेहरू की डेथ हो जाती 1965 में मिस्टीरियस सर्कमस्टांसिस के अंदर टैशकेंट के अंदर उनके जो सक्सेसर हैं, उनकी भी डेथ हो जाती है लाल बहादुर शास्त्री की तो इसके बाद देर इज समिंग ऑफ अ पॉलिटिकल वैक्यूम दैट इज देयर इन इंडिया एट दिस टाइम द जुडिशरी स्ट्राइक्स फर्स्ट टेकिंग चार्ज ऑफ दिस यू नो वैक्यूम तो यहां पे अब थोड़ा थोड़ा चेंज नजर आना शुरू होगा जुडिशरी जुडिशरी के आइडिया में क्यों क्योंकि पोलिटिकली उतनी स्ट्रॉन्ग एस्पेक्ट नहीं है पार्लियामेंट के अंदर लेट्स सो सुप्रीम कोर्ट अडॉप्टेड अ न्यू विजन to see the powers of the parliament that it cannot amend part 3 of the constitution that is fundamental rights and thus awarded fundamental rights a transcendental position to jo pehle verdict di thi usse badal gaye there is something called as revisory jurisdiction which is available to the supreme court under article 137 to iske tahat supreme court jo hai wo apna khud ka decision change kar sakta hai तो उसी को एक्सरसाइज करते हुए ये किया गया अपने पुराने स्टैंड से पलट के देन केम दी केशव नंद भारती केस 1973। एट दिस टाइम व्हाट हैज हैपन इंदिरा गांधी हैज प्रूवन हर मेटल 1970, 1965 वॉर अगेंस्ट पाकिस्तान तो हम पहले जीत चुके थे 1971 वाज़ द वॉर टेकन केयर ऑफ बाय इंदिरा गांधी बांग्लादेश वॉज क्रिएटेड ईस्ट पाकिस्तान ही खत्म कर दिया एज इट इज ठीक है तो डिसाइसिव स्ट्रेंथ पार्लियामेंट के अंदर थी इस टाइम पे ठीक है लेकिन और यहां पे उन्होंने क्या किया कि दिस इंटायर वर्डिक्ट यू नो केशव नंद भारती के इस वर्डिक्ट थर्टीन जज कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल बेंच था इट वाज इंटायरली अ सेवन सिक्स वर्डिक्ट देर वाज अ पर्टिकुलर जज जिनको इंदिरा गांधी ने ही दो लोगों को छोड़ के प्रमोशन करा के आगे नियुक्त किया था चीफ जस्टिस तो उनकी वर्डिक्ट की वजह से ये सेवन सिक्स वर्डिक्ट आ रही तो उन्होंने कहा कि ठीक है आप अमेंड कर सकते हैं सारा कुछ बस एक बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन छोड़ के सब कुछ अमेंड कर सकते हैं फंडामेंटल राइट्स भी अमेंड कर सकते हैं ठीक है तो ये थोड़ी सी एक बैलेंस्ड वर्ड एक्ट आई दोनों की तरफ देन इंदिरा नेहरू गांधी वर्सेस राजनारायण एंड मिनरवा मिल्स वर्सेज यूनियन ऑफ इंडिया केस ये उसके बाद हुए द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बेंचेस ऑफ सुप्रीम कोर्ट अंडर द बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर डॉक्टर to strike down the 39th amendment and parts of 42nd amendment respectively and paved way for restoration of indian democracy 
the supreme court's position on the constitutional amendment laid out in the judgment is that parliament can amend the constitution but cannot destroy the basic structure so wahi jo keshav nand bharti wala view hai wo aaj bhi prevail karta hai uske baad wale cases aayenge do minerva mill case and rajnarayan case now what is the significance in terms of strengthening the democracy that's the second part of the question so discuss its evolution and significance in strengthening the democracy so evolution aapne discuss kar li through cases kaise kaise hua and how it strengthens the democracy so that's the second part so protection from any authoritarian regime jo kal ko aake aapka pura constitution change kar de aur democracy ki jagah pe let's say authoritarian structure le independence of judiciary so that it is able to provide a check against the power and there is actual separation of power in a workable sense in india then citizenship rights so individual rights are preserved and he is or she is able to access the courts whenever needed against the state even so because rights are in a way of curtailment of the power of state mujhe agar aapko koi hak dena hai to uske liye mujhe apni kuch powers ko simit karna zaruri hai especially the coercive powers so that's the consideration between the state and the citizen so being dynamic in nature it is more progressive and open to changes in times like rigid nature of early judgments so basic structure of the constitution ne bahut sari cheezon mein help bhi kiya then that's that for today's discussion federalism ya yes, inter state relations ke upar hum kal baat karenge theek hai ab iske sath related uh, jo current aspects hain as far as this uh, entire as uh, federalism and other debates are concerned those also are important for you lekin ye jo indian constitution wala aspect hai na isme constitutional amendments hi chahiye hote hain so i would suggest ki jo latest amendments hain starting from 100th amendment onward wo aap ek bar zarur dekh lijiye iske sath sath so then that will complete the entire thing wo aapko current affairs ke andar already hain ya aapki lakshmi kant ki kitab ke andar bhi de rakhi hoti hain bas isse zyada kuch nahi chahiye इस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक को हैंडल करने के लिए ठीक है सो फार सो गुड यहां पे कुछ डाउट्स हैं तो प्लीज पूछिए